Kapi-kapi muna tayo bago tayo magkwentuhan. Mm. Sarap talaga yung kape, yung first taste of coffee in the morning. Sobrang sarap. Char. Okay. So dahil day off ko, at naka-pink ako, <laughs> naka-pink dress ako guys, na sobrang ano, sobrang mahaba. But I like it. So, binili ko siya, naka-sale. So, suotin natin. Kahit wala tayong ganap for today. So, anyway, dahil day off ko, mag-usap tayo. Ano man dapat natin pag-usapan? Ano guys, um, somebody actually asked me if mahirap bang tumira abroad. Depende yan sa'yo. To be honest. Kasi, but generally speaking, mahirap siya Pero kaya naman, hindi naman lang always mahirap. Kasi, let's say, ako for example, I've been living here in Denmark since um, 2012. Pero 2011, nagta-travel, travel back and forth na ako. So, 2012, yun na yung nag-decide talaga kami na I'm gonna be staying here for good. So, first, let's say, let's just say first two three months, ano siya? There's no hirap yet. Kasi, it's more of exciting feeling, na excited ka, na parang, oh, this is a new country, I'm gonna be, like, everything is a new experience. So, more of excitement, and wala pa yung feeling na, sa, ako, sa akin lang, ha, wala pa yung feeling na, oh, I miss my family, walang ganun, ganun na feeling. Walang, I miss the feeling, walang ganun. First three months talaga, ini-enjoy, enjoy, enjoy ko lang. But then, after that, the reality sink in, na parang, because I live in Denmark, yung language nila dito is, Danish. It's not English. So, you actually have to go to school and learn the language. And at first, you thought, at first, I was thinking, ah, it's just gonna be easy, you know? Like, I'm just gonna go to school, learn it. But then, you, but then I also forgot na at that time, tumatanda na rin tayo. And as they said, pag tumatanda, medyo mahirap ng matuto ng, medyo mahirap ng magtuto ng language, ng new language, compare sa yung bata ka talaga nag-start. So, yun, yung, yung unang challenge yon Na parang you have to learn the language for you to learn, uh, for you to find job, you need to learn the language first. At yung language nila talaga is one of the most difficult to learn. Yun yung sabi nila. And I think so, kasi patagal na ako dito, nahirapan pa rin ako, guys. So, yun. Uh, and the, at that time, in my time, the government will provide, I think, two years of free um, language school para sa yung mga katulad ko. So, free yon But I think now, na-change na nila na kailangan may, may portion na magbabayad ka. So, for two years yon nag-aral ka. And then, at the same time, there's the feeling of, alam mo, yun, nung sa Pinas ka, kasi, it's your country. Like, you know what's gonna happen. You know the routine and all that. You got a job. You're earning your own money. Pero, syempre, pag nagsisimula ka pa lang dito, sa case ko, wala akong trabaho noon, so you're always gonna be like, ah, now my husband is here, it's annoying, he's gonna disturb me again. Quiet dong ha? It's a serious topic dong. What's the topic? The topic is like, is it difficult to live abroad? Is it, Martin? It's very difficult to live abroad. <laughs> no, it's not actually. No, I, I mean, it depends. To me. <laughs> That's why it's difficult. No, it's easy. No. Okay, let me just continue here. So anyway, so yun yung mga pinagdaanan ko. I had to learn the language and at the same time, hindi ka sanay na you're not really earning um your own money. Kasi dati sa Pilipinas, since talaga nag-graduate ako ng college, work ng work ng work lang talaga ako so I'm earning my own money. So at that time, I was totally 100% dependent sa husband ko and parang alam mo yung, yung pride mo din sa sarili mo na parang oh, I used to earn my own money and now parang if I need something, I have to like, hey, you know, could you buy this for me? Could you this? And that, like, you have to eat your pride somehow because you've been working on your own for so long, you've been self-sufficient, and suddenly, here you are, dependent to the man. But there's nothing wrong to that. There's nothing wrong. It's just, I just got used of, you know, I work. So, for the longest time, nakadepende ako sa kanya ni if I want something, Hindi na, mabait naman siya talaga. Mabait talaga yung mga Danish, I have to say. But, you really have to, hindi katulad ng sa ating mga Pinoy, na pag Pinoy, parang sa feel-feel lang, alam na ng 
partner mo na ano yung kailangan mo dito talaga, you have to speak out. So, ako, if I need something, if I wanna buy something, hindi niya na-feel yun, I have to say it na, hey, could you buy this for me? Ganyan. So, yun yung difference, medyo nahihiya-hiya pa. And then, syempre, sa, um, sa Pilipinas din, gusto mo tumulong sa pamilya mo, that's normal naman talaga sa culture natin, that you wanna help the family. It's not as if naman yung family ko, they're asking. Hindi. Um, I voluntarily nagbibigay because it makes me happy. Kasi nga, I'm very far from them, so it's my way of showing my love for them. So, it was very hard kasi I didn't have work, and I'm just like, okay, I really, I want work, I want work. So, anyway, so I've concentrated on learning the language, <laughs> and until now, fail! <laughs> fail, nasa basic-basic pa rin, nakakaintindi na naman ako talaga, pero mas mahirap yung pagsalita. So, anyway, pero at work, nagdi-Danish talaga ako, guys, believe me. So, yon yung mga pangyayari. So, medyo nahirapan ako doon, and iba din when it comes to friends kasi in the Philippines it's like you build your friends you know you go to the same school um it's so easy to meet up punta lang ng Ayala ng SM kahit hindi magbilibili magpapalamig lang doon okay na and the friendship was built you understand like it got a foundation so now you came in a new country it's like you got zero friends and at that and when you get zero friends and you still have to learn the language you have to find job you're still adjusting to the new environment so it's like finding friends is actually like the least of the priority like it will come when it will come um pero you if if friends is important for you like if 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 finding friends is important for you so you need to you need to be active you need to be proactive joining network if there's invites you go there even if you don't really like going there to build friends. Pero medyo nahirapan ako sa ganun kasi iba yung priority ko when I came here. My priority was always um, you know, I, I wanna have a good relationship with my husband. I wanna find job to feel the norm, normal life, normal, see how do you say that? Yeah, yung ganun. So yung friends talaga, inisip ko it will come and it will come. Pero pag hindi, I got my best friend. Like, I got my husband so it doesn't really matter. So anyway, yun yun. And my husband ko is nakikinig. So feel na feel niya. Nag-smile. Smile talaga siya. So yun guys. So medyo doon tayo nahirapan. And ano. Parang nahirapan din. Not really nahirapan. But you have to learn the culture. For example, kung sa Pinas tayo. Pag nagbe-break time. Then you eat. Right? You bring your own food and you eat. And normally when you see your work. May she will say, hey eat. Oh, you know. Share, share tayo. Ganyan. Pero dito hindi like you really have to eat just your own food and and somehow when i first got into the work and you know i had my break time and i just noticed like okay so wala pa lang offer offer na eh tikman mo to ganyan hindi walang ganun guys kung ano lang yung food dinala mo yun yung pagkain mo pag wala kang dinala wala kang makakain and then you can just be sitting there without food and yung mga co-workmate mo on the same table are eating so sa atin parang ah uh, parang awkward. Pero sa kanila, it's normal because nga daw, um, may mga tao na mga, parang, may mga tao na maraming allergies. So, you'd rather not offer them food kasi baka magkasakit sila and ikaw pa ang masisi. So, yun. So, I learned to cope up with that na parang, okay, this is my food. I'm just gonna eat even if my other workmates is in front of me is not eating. Like, that's no big deal. Sa kanila. Hindi ngayon asawa ko. So, yun. Pero, quiet, Martin. So, so yon ang mga ano hindi naman talaga siya mahirap mahirap kasi basta I don't think it's sobrang hirap pero minsan um, namimiss mo din kasi medyo, before nga hindi ko namimiss talaga yung Pilipinas kanya I mean I was in the exciting mood it's gonna be fun ganyan pero as you live here long time may mga time talaga na you miss your family na um, may mga events sila doon sa Pinas na hindi ka kasali, there's some birthday parties, birthday parties na hindi ka kasali, may mga may mga naliligo sila ng dagat and they look so happy and hindi ka kasali and you wanna be there but you cannot. So doon lang medyo ano, hindi naman talaga ako ganoon ka sentimental na tao pero there's just the feeling na oh only if I was there, you know, I could have been enjoying with them, ganyan, I could have been there. Pero yun yung ano, pero sa may iba siguro na sobrang nahirapan especially yung mga ano talaga, yung mga OFWs talaga na nagpuntang abroad at nag-work at doon napunta sa mga Saudi, ano, sa mga gano'n na countries, may mga nahirapan, pero not all, may iba naman talaga na okay din yung buhay-buhay nila. Pero dito sa Denmark, generally speaking, 
um, hi, ano talaga, hindi naman talaga nahirapan. I think, I would say, I will attest to it na yung mga Pinay dito, um, they are living really okay. Um, nakakaproblema lang talaga with the language. Yun. Yun yung parang, every time I have conversation with other Filipinos, yun talaga yung biggest, ano, biggest issue, yung learning the language. Pero, kapalan lang talaga ng muka, guys. Kapalan. Because mostly Filipinos, if they think, oh, um, if I'm gonna say it wrong, maybe they will laugh at me, then I'd rather be quiet. Ganyan. May ganyang attitude pa rin ako hanggang ngayon. But then, because I'm at work, um, I really do my best to speak in Danish. So, nakaya ko naman siya. And so far, I've been working there for, I don't know, six years? Five years? I've been working there for five years. And, you know, kaya ko naman siya every day. Ano lang talaga? The, 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 I think the one thing I could advise is to really know how to pakikisama. I don't know what is that in English learn how to I don't know what is pakikisama though you know like you learn how to vibe with people I don't know what is the term in that in English one word create rapport yeah create create rapport with people I think like that's really important to survive like of course you are in a new country and all of course you still have to be Filipino and all that but you are in a new country so you have to be the one to adjust yon of course you should not forget your culture your roots and all that but when you are in for example in denmark you have to adjust you have to adopt their their culture because that's just the way it is so yung tanong if nahirapan ba ako um dito sa denmark i would say no but the language yes <laughs> so yun lang guys so yun ang ating kwentuhan na tang aking kape medyo lumalamig-lamig na so that's it thank you so much for watching have a great day bye